So the first look at the uh, Finerci DSO-152 guys, right? These two tools are very similar in the sense that, at least in the voltage measurement mode for uh, a multimeter, uh, they both measure voltage and only voltage in the case of an oscilloscope. Yes, there's some accessories you can get that can you know, allow you to expand the uh, facility of a, of a scope, but a scope will only measure voltage, not resistance, not, um, not current. Again, there's accessories, but let's just stick to the basic. We're only looking at voltage measurement here, right? So what's the difference between uh, a meter and the scope? Well, it's obvious that one presents its uh, data that it's measuring in a numerical or digit format, and another one presents it graphically. So let's just take a second. Think of a multimeter as providing uh, a numerical update, um, relatively slow, very slow in electronics terms. You know, updating from time to time numerically. So as opposed to numerically, an oscilloscope will graphically represent the uh, uh, voltage that's under scrutiny. It does so by presenting it on two axes. One is the uh, y-axis, which is uh, the voltage or amplitude, and the other is the x-axis on the uh, horizontal axis. If you forget which one is x and y, I remember that the x-axis goes across, like as in across, yeah? So that is your time base and it plots out on a regular interval at very, very high speed. Again, in the case of the DSO-152, they claim at 2.5 uh, megasamples per second. Uh, that will change again, depending on what time base you have selected, but that's a lot of samples compared to your, uh, your multimeter. And it's plotted in an uh, ongoing basis in real time on the screen. So the plot or the trace that you end up with on the scope will end up generating or building something like this. So instead of uh, numerical values at set points in time that leave you mentally uh, plotting what is actually going on with a particular circuit, the scope will actually do it for you. It has the wherewithal, of course, to connect the dots. Although on some sco scopes you can actually select uh, dot representation on screen as opposed to line or vector uh, presentations. Just a couple of qualifying uh, cautionary notes here guys before we get started. If you're struggling to get the same image on the screen with the same setup here, a couple of things you should check. Make sure the attenuator is selected to the times one mode of operation if you have it selected for any other selection. In the case of the DSO-152 here, you can also select uh, times 10, in which case, if you have that selected, you'll only get one-tenth of the uh, signal appearing on the screen, screwing you up when you're trying to correlate what you're looking at versus your scaling, uh, your voltage scaling. So keep that in mind. Another thing, make sure that your coupling is selected for DC. In this initial uh, use of the scope, we're only using a DC signal. If this is inadvertently selected for AC, it will block the DC and you'll basically see nothing again confusing you and uh, you don't need that at this particular stage of uh, trying to understand what's going on. As you can see here, I just have a little nine volt battery in the most basic of setups. I've got the little uh, mini coax hooked up with the two alligator leads that the rig comes with. You can also use an adapter um, that you can use standard uh, BNC uh, leads with it don't be stupid like me make sure you read the details on what you're actually ordering uh, <laughs> I ordered this minus the little uh, adapter and saved myself uh, I think all the two dollars and ended up paying like eight bucks to get the adapter so make sure you read what you're ordering anyway uh, so what's actually on the uh, on the little unit itself uh, at the side, you can charge the rig with a USB-C, pretty straightforward. Again, I've got the uh, the mini coax uh, hooked up on the top here. Um, there is an um, uh, internal uh, pulse generator. I think that's a one kilohertz um, square wave. Um, there's a toggle wheel here on the top that you can toggle through the various functions. Uh, auto mode, uh, auto mode up and down and a run button and the on button itself. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on the buttonology guys for the simple reason it's pretty straightforward and there's other videos out there explaining this in, in quite a lot of detail. So to turn it on, just long press, about one second of the yellow button on the front of the unit and let's take a look to see what we actually have here. 
just focusing on the very, very basic fun, uh, aspects of the scope here, guys. I'm not gonna bother showing you the calibration function and all that stuff yet. There's no point to it if you don't understand what you're actually looking at. So again, the way the scope actually represents uh, the voltage that it's measuring, and again, scopes only measure voltage. They cannot measure resistance or amperage. Yes, you can get accessories and do that, but um, we'll leave that out of the picture for now. We're just sticking to the very, very basic voltage measurement, okay? So the, uh, the axis itself, the y-axis, and the x-axis, if you forget which one is which, just keep in mind that the x-axis goes across, like as in an x being across, goes across the screen, right? So this is our voltage, and this is our time base. What the uh, options we have on the bottom, um, voltage scaling. This is attenuation. We'll leave this for the time being. This is your time base selection. Right now it's uh, on uh, 10 microseconds, extremely fast, far too fast for our purposes here. This is the coupling mode. There's a DC and an AC mode coupling available, also beyond the scope of the introductory video here. And the stop and a run mode here. You can toggle between the two modes if you want to hold this up here. This is our trigger mode. For now, we're just gonna leave it in auto. Um, we'll get to the trigger mode in short order. Not this video, but we will discuss it in uh, due course. And this is the uh, trigger mode. Um, is it triggering on, in this case, it is on the leading edge, leading edge of the signal, or you can toggle it for the uh, falling edge, trailing edge. Right, and there's uh, three different modes. There's normal, auto, normal, and uh, single as in uh, one shot um, triggering. Again, we'll get to the discussing that de detail in due course here, guys. What we're looking at, we've got the the uh, the grid or the graticule more correctly. And in the case of the little uh, uh, DSO-152, um, the graticule is laid out in a 12, which is a wee bit odd. Normally it's 10 uh, by eight um, grid pattern, right? So eight segments to the to the uh, y-axis and 12 across on the uh, time base, right? So um, let me just toggle to something a little more sensible here so we can understand what we're talking about here. So the toggle wheel allows you to toggle through the functions, left or right, it's pretty intuitive. So here I'm on two volts per uh, division, right? So you can see here, this is the channel trigger. It's only a single, sorry, the channel marker. It is only a single channel um, scope. So we have the channel marker here marked as one. And that's our reference line above and below positive and negative, if you prefer, if that makes it simple for you. And over here, this is our trigger um, marker, right? Again, we'll get to this in due course, but that's what it is in case you're looking at the screen and wondering exactly what it is. Okay, so two volts per division. That would mean, so this is our zero reference. That's, we have nothing hooked up at the moment, guys, although you may think it's hooked up. My nine volt battery is not hooked up here. It's ready to be hooked up. This would be two volts if the line was presenting at this level on the uh, Y axis, the vertical uh, mode, four, six, and eight. Okay, and I've picked this set up for a reason to show you what will happen if I, I'm just gonna take my word for it. I'm just gonna go over, actually hook up the nine volt battery here. Let's see what we actually have presented to us here. Uh, basically nothing, right? Or is it nothing? If you take a close look here, guys, you'll see that this is transitioned from a grayish blue line on the top here, outlining the graticule, to a yellow line. This is telling you your overscale on the positive side of the scope. You can't see your trace because it's because it's off the scale. It's a nine volt battery. It's brand new, so it's kicking out nearly ten volts, right? So this is again two, four, six, eight volts would be the maximum you could see at this line here. We've got about between nine and 10 volts. Let's adjust the scaling, right? So there's two ways we can bring this image, this uh, trace in a uh, view here. Let's go with, let's go to the channel marker and I can slide the zero reference down. And you can see that because I've moved the zero reference, two, four, six, 
eight, and there's the 10, so right around nine volts. Makes sense? Bottom left-hand corner is your voltage scaling or amplitude scaling, okay? So again, volts per division, referenced from your channel marker. It's, it's toggled to blue now, guys, because I actually have this selected. The, the, the channel itself is still presenting in yellow. This is only blue because this is my current selection. You've seen as I move the arrows, it actually moved the channel marker down. Two, four, six, eight, 10. We have somewhere below 10, so somewhere between eight and uh, uh, 10 on the upper side of nine-ish. So I don't know, nine and a half volts. We don't need to get the... Uh, the channel marker mode and just toggle down to the scaling mode and now I can actually just go uh, one long press on the run button and it brings up our measurement parameters. There's our minimum, our maximum and minimum average and RMS values that we're actually reading. Now of course, of course this is a DC value that we're reading coming from the 9 volt battery guys, right? So not, nothing, this doesn't really mean much at this particular point in time, nor does the voltage peak to peak frequency, duty cycle, or the period of the, uh, of the uh, signal, which of course is the inverse of the, uh, the frequency. To get rid of this, um, all you do is another, uh, on the run mode, another long press, and uh, the run button, another long press, and it will clear the parameters that we've got cleared with the, right? The other way that we could have dealt with the uh, trace being off screen, of course, is simply by uh, changing um, the uh, scaling, the voltage scaling on the uh, on the scope here. So let me uh, let me bring the channel uh, reference marker back up to the middle of the screen. Again, just for demonstration purposes, let me toggle to the voltage scaling. Again, you've seen when it went off scale. We actually uh, have the overscale uh, marker bar there now. Now we can change the scaling here. Now I've got five volts per division. So does it make sense that again, from the zero scale, from the zero reference marker, where the channel marker actually is, per division, we now have five volts. Can you see that clearly, guys? I don't know if you can see it too clearly. Hopefully the camera's picking up. Okay, it's a rather small screen, of course. <laughs> the whole point to this little rig. From the reference marker, the zero marker there, the channel marker, we count five uh, volts per division. So that would be five volts, that would be 10 volts. So that makes sense, right? Let's go, let's take it to the extremes. Let's go 10 volts per division. That, of course, that would be just below one uh, um, reference square, reference marker on the graticule. And yeah, that's the maximum we can actually get. Again, making second, keeping uh, keeping in mind that it's uh, 40 volts or 80 volts peak to peak maximum that can be displayed. So 10 volts, one, two, three, four would be 40 volts. That makes sense, right? I think we'll leave it at this, guys. I want to keep these videos short. I don't want to bring in the uh, the time uh, uh, domain into the picture yet. Here, the time base, how we adjust it, and how it will change uh, things. Nor do I want to get into the trigger. Uh, that's for the next uh, segment in the in the little series. So again, we just basically discussed the basic operations of it, a wee bit of botanology, but mostly about the uh, y-axis scaling for the voltage or amplitude uh, and how you can adjust it, markers for the overscale.